everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Erica from Confessions of a Homeschooler and I'm here with another in my series on how to study, take notes, and just improve your grades overall if you are a student, mostly for junior high, high school, and some of this can also apply to college courses as well. Now my first video we went through and I taught you how to take some notes. So how to take colorful, um, visually appealing notes, just separate out the information so it's a little bit easier for you. And I also in this video told you what to write down out of a text or a lecture so that you kind of have a clue as to what kind of information you're supposed to be storing. We also talked about um, using things like um, mnemonic devices to help you remember as well. So where you're taking the first letter of each word and then using that as a study tool. And we also talked about using some different kinds of lettering in your notes just to make things stand out. So all of that good stuff is in my note taking video which was my first one. Um, the next one we talked about how to create flashcards off of your notes and other study tools that can kind of help you. And so we created some of these fun flashcards and I also showed you in the video after that how to study off of those using a spaced um, repetition kind of format where you're reviewing things repetitively spaced out over a longer period of time but that way you're actually still learning the information and still um, retaining it a lot better. So I'll link all those videos below so that you can check those out. They have a lot more deal, detail in them. I was just showing you samples of what we did in those videos. Today I'd actually like to talk to you a little bit more about taking the test itself. Now a lot of people have test anxiety. Um, it's very, very common. So that's the first thing that I want to maybe encourage you. If you feel really anxious when it comes to test time, you are not alone. There is a very large number of people who get anxious taking tests. It's very similar to speaking in public or performing singing in front of other people. Um, I used to be really anxious when I had to pray out loud in front of a group of people because I was always worried I was going to say the wrong thing or make a mistake. Um, kind of the same thing with speaking in public and that kind of thing. Now I'm going to give you some tips and tricks to help curb your test anxiety. Um, if you don't feel anxious for tests, I'm also giving you some tips and tricks on how to prepare for your exam and just um, get ready to take it and then do a good job like during the exam itself. So the first thing I want to just say is if you do feel anxious, you are not alone. There are tons and tons of people out there who get test anxiety. And just like anything else um, in the world, practice makes perfect. And so if you have something that you're struggling with to learn or to do, say you want to learn a foreign language or learn how to play an instrument, you can't expect to just look at it once, play it once, and then just be like magnificent at it, right? It takes a lot of time. The same thing is true with, it takes a lot of time and practice. Taking tests. Um, is very similar. Uh, getting over stage fright is very similar. The more that you do it, the more comfortable you'll be with it. And so I know for a lot of homeschoolers, the notion is, um, oh, my student isn't doing a good job taking tests. They're just a bad test taker. Um, there's a couple issues with that, and this is just my opinion. And every child is different, especially if you have a special needs student. Some of these things may not apply to your situation because those can be very unique. And um, anxiety they might be feeling during taking tests and things like that can be really real, um, uh, something that you have to learn how to work around in a different way. But for the majority of people, test anxiety is something that is mostly in your mind. It can cause a physical reaction in your body, um, where to the point where you're so nervous, you're sweating, you can't think. Um, it can even get so bad um, as to have to leave the actual class, like leave the test room or whatever. Um, or you kind of just freeze up and you can't think of anything and you, you just either make a bunch of uh, pretend answers, just guess, or you don't answer things and you just are like, you just give up and you're like, okay, well when the timer goes off, I'm just done. It's just, I just, I failed this test. So I wanna help you out um, and get you over that kind of fear. Um, I also want to just give you some just overall tips in general as well to help improve your test taking skills. So like I mentioned, with anything, practice makes perfect. Now with the note taking video that I did and I showed you how to take notes and then I showed you how to transfer those notes to flashcards and then I showed you how to study those flashcards and your notes and questions in your book, the more frequently that you are exposing yourself to whatever material it is for whatever class it is, the more that your brain will absorb that material. The better prepared you'll be for your test, so the more time you put into studying, the more you'll get out of it when it comes time to take a test. And naturally, that will increase your confidence when walking into that test. So if you're nervous about taking a test, 
you don't think you're going to do well, your grade is really depending on it, the more time and effort you put into it, the more confident you'll be and the less nervous or anxious you'll feel when taking that test. So uh, just taking the time to study your notes and uh, study your flashcards and just review the material and all of those things will just naturally decrease any anxiety you might be feeling. And of course you'll do better just anyways because you actually know the information. Um, the second thing that I kind of mentioned is to practice. Practice a lot. Um, like I kind of said, homeschoolers tend to often do other things instead of taking tests if their students aren't doing well or if you, or if you don't like taking tests. So you can do assessments. You can kind of skip testing depending on your state laws, you might not even have to test at all. Um, here's why I think that's not a great uh, course of action because eventually, especially if you plan on going into higher education, you will have to take tests at some point. You might even need to take some kind of a test um, you know, in your vocation. You have to take a test to get a driver's license. There's a lot of situations in the world where um, you are going to have to be taking a test just to kind of prove your skills, prove what you know, in order to just move ahead in life. And so by avoiding it all through your homeschooling years, uh, you can really be setting yourself up for failure when you get into college or like I said, just go to get your driver's license. Suddenly you haven't had to deal with a testing situation and it's like a, a instant panic mode. You, you know, you get into a situation and you, you don't know how to handle it. You don't know how to relax yourself. You haven't prepared maybe as well for it as you should have and you panic, you fail, test over. So just by um, you kind of pushing the whole testing thing aside through your homeschooling years, that can really hinder you um, when you get further on into your um, you know adult life. So I don't suggest just skipping it all together. As a matter of fact, one of my students um, gets test anxiety. And one of the first things that we did for her was we started practicing taking tests. Now she was kind of younger when we figured this out. And so I thought, you know what? You're, this makes you nervous, let's do it. Let's do it over and over, repeat it, and get you used to taking tests. The more you do it, the more you practice taking tests, the more you'll feel comfortable with it, and the less anxiety you'll feel when a test time comes. So practice a lot. Um, the third thing is to break down um, tests into manual, manageable pieces. So timed tests can really stress some people out. I have a couple tips for those. My first one is to take the amount of time, say you have 45 minutes to do an exam, the immediate reaction for my daughter anyways was, oh my gosh, I don't have enough time, I'm never gonna finish. And she literally would freeze up and not be able to complete the test at all. Or she'd just put in a bunch of false answers, she just guess, because she was so stressed out she couldn't even read and comprehend the text. Like her brain just, you know, checked out. So one way to practice that, like I said, we're gonna be doing a lot of practicing with test taking here, is to time yourself. If you're nervous about taking timed reading tests or timed math drills or um, you know anything like that where you're being timed, time yourself. Do mock tests at home, get a five minute free math drill worksheet off the internet, set yourself a timer. Um, I think it can help if you're in charge of the timer, you as a student here, um, because you can decide when you start, you can see the timer going, you can see when it stops, you can see how much time you have to complete how you're doing. And it's okay, you're not, there's nothing riding on the line on this test. You can practice, you know, nothing, you're not gonna fail, uh, you're not gonna not get your driver's license, whatever it is when you're practicing at home, all right? So just practice, get used to being timed. The more you get used to being timed, the more you'll feel comfortable with it. The second thing you can do is to break down the test. So if you have 45 minutes and you have, uh, you know, 45 questions, you know that you have one minute per question. So set a second timer for one minute, just so you can kind of gauge and see most tests give you plenty of time to get through the material. Now some of the five minute math drills and things can actually be kind of hard and they're, they're geared to making you do math problems faster and faster and faster. Um, most of the time if you have a reading test, there's plenty of time. You might not think there is because there's a lot of material to read and then there's several questions following that. But if you break it up into more manageable pieces, you can see, oh, I actually have two minutes for each question. And if you set a timer for two minutes and you're just sitting there working on one question, I think you'll find that it's actually a long time. It's longer than you think it is. It's longer than your brain might feel like it is. So I suggest doing practices, breaking up your tests so you know how much time you have on each um, section. If one section takes a little bit longer, chances are you'll be able to go a little bit faster on another section. And then you can see that, you know, logically you're kind of showing your brain, hey, I actually can get through this. I don't need to be afraid when I'm being timed. 
Um, so just practice, practice a lot, break it down into um, you know manageable pieces so you can see how much time you have. Um, the other thing about practice tests is, there, like I mentioned, is there's nothing on the line. You're not losing anything, you're not being graded, you're just getting yourself used to taking those tests. So just know, that you're kind of in charge of your practice sessions, okay? And you're benefiting yourself by just getting your body used to taking a test, getting your brain used to taking a test. Um, and then you can kind of, that helps, will, will also help calm you down during tests. Um, the other thing I kind of mentioned is to be in charge of the timer yourself. Now, if you're a parent and you're homeschooling, you can um, set the timer on the child's desk, let them start it, let them stop it. We have iPads, iPhones, um, just little egg timers. Any of those things can work. They can actually be kind of fun. And once your student gets used to doing it or once you get used to doing time tests challenge yourself try and take that same worksheet um, say a five minute math drill and do it in four minutes and then see if you can do it in three minutes the next day see how many you can get done in two minutes and then how many can you get done in one minute and just challenge yourself and make it more of a fun um, challenging kind of a game versus a, oh my gosh I only have five minutes I can't do it at freak out session okay so the more you practice the more you're kind of in charge of your test taking the less anxious that you'll feel um, and then if you can turn it into a challenge or a game, that can also just mentally help your brain like wrap around the material. Um, the other thing that you can do um, that I highly suggest, especially if you're a homeschooler, is to practice taking different types of tests. So when we do our standardized testing, we've got bubble tests. Um, when we are testing at home, a lot of times we're doing speed drills for math or we're doing essay questions, or we're doing multiple choice questions. There are a lot of um, fill in the blank, true and false. There's all kinds of different tests, and there's a lot of uh, free resources out there where you can kind of plug your information in and they're just worksheet creators and it will create you a worksheet whatever kind you want you know true or false um, stuff like that practice taking different types of tests and I'm not saying to do that all in one day maybe on Mondays practice taking a true and false on Tuesday practice a math drill on Wednesday practice excuse me, practice some, um, a bubble fill-in. Um, bubble fill-in tests um, can be difficult for homeschoolers because they're not necessarily used to them. We have to do them every other year here in my state, um, but you may have never had to take a bubble test. And so just the process of reading a question on a sheet of paper and then transferring it over to a bubble, um, and there's tons of bubbles over here, and you're on question 15 over here, and all of a sudden you're off on your bubbles over here, that can just get really distracting and really stressful for a student, or if they get to the end and they maybe have one row of bubbles left it's like oh my gosh i messed up somewhere what do i do um and so just if you're used to doing that there's a couple of strategies you can do for bubble tests you can uh stick a ruler on there and just move it down each time so you don't accidentally get offline you can stick a piece of paper there that kind of thing um and you know just kind of cross mark off the ones that you've already done hide them with a piece of paper or something so that you kind of can keep your place on that but practice makes perfect just like anything else it's the same with test taking so practice taking all right, so one other thing that I wanted to mention is the location of your test. Now, sometimes people can feel test anxiety because at home they're studying and everything is fine. Um, they're nice and relaxed. They're not feeling stressed out, especially if you're taking a practice. You know it's not you know, uh, going to count and that kind of thing. But then when you take that and move your body over to, say, a test-taking facility, like if you're doing the SATs or a classroom or whatever, um, all of a sudden, just the environment itself can be stressful. All of a sudden, maybe it's super quiet, and maybe you've had music on or siblings studying when you're at home, um, you know, and you're sitting in a desk, and all you have is your paper and your pencil, and it's like, oh my gosh, I don't have things around me now to be able to associate with like I was when I was at home studying. So just location can be an issue for some test-takers. So if at all possible, I suggest setting up your test location similar to where you're going to be taking a test. So for example, if you're going to be taking a test in a room with lots and lots of other people where there's going to be noise, um, maybe a large lecture hall, something like that, maybe go to, um, say, a library um, in the kids section where there's actually noise going on and practice taking a test there with distractions. If you're taking a test in a smaller classroom with not very many people where it's going to be just like you know, pin drop silence, you're sitting at one desk, all you have is a piece of scratch paper, a pencil, and your test, then set that up at your house. Make sure that it's it's quiet. Go somewhere where you're not maybe normally studying, where you have all your fun, uh, you know, my kids have little erasers, and we've got, you know, some 
colorful calendars and stuff like this back here and just things around them that kind of make them feel comfortable take yourself out of that situation set up um, just a card table and a chair um, maybe you know somewhere where there's not a lot of distractions go in the basement go in to a different room than what you're normally used to studying in like if you study in your bedroom with your comfy pillows and all that stuff leave that space go somewhere else where you're not comfortable um, where there's nothing else around you give yourself exactly what you'll have for the test your test maybe a piece of scratch paper and one or two pencils and that is it you know you can still set your timer if, you, if it's time test you'll be taking um, and then practice taking a test in that environment so that you kind of get used to taking a test in dead silence or you get used to taking a test where there might be distractions so just moving your body to a new location where it's uncomfortable and unfamiliar can actually help you when you're just preparing um, mentally and physically for taking a test in like a classroom or lecture hall type setting all right, and then just one last just kind of physical overall um, thing I'd like to kind of mention is just to prepare your body. So you want to make sure you eat a good breakfast. You don't want to be hungry. Um, you also, when you get to the testing place, you can, um, you know, just take some deep breaths before you start. Just relax yourself down. Just, all right. I got this, I've studied well, I can do this. Just try and just a couple calming, um, you know, encouraging words to yourself and just few deep breaths just to kind of calm your body down just in general. If you feel yourself starting to get anxious during the test, um, stop what you're doing and do the same thing. Just take some calming breaths. Um, I've had people say it helps to cover their eyes and just close your eyes. You don't want to touch your eyes because that can make it hard to see when you take your hands off, but close your eyes, cover them up to block out a little bit of light and just to visualize just yourself calming down, visualize yourself in a nice a place that you like doing something you like just to kind of give your brain um, brain like a mental break like if you're in the middle of a test you can't necessarily get up and go outside and get a breather like you can if you're at home and come back in so you kind of give your your brain a breather but just in the location that you're at um, again take a few deep breaths that kind of thing that can just really and then start over it can really help if you start getting anxious and more anxious and more anxious and you don't do anything to relax yourself um, then it can just you know get to the point where it's just too much um, another good tip is to just you know squeeze all the muscles in your body and then just let them go shake them out do it again do that a couple of times and that'll just you know shake out your arms that'll just kind of relax your body overall and then pick back up with where you are um, another tip if you're right in the middle of the test say you don't know an answer and it's just like ah, oh, freak out time right skip it just take a break don't forget that you skipped it but just skip that one and go on to the next one and finish maybe that page and then go back to the one you might even finish the whole test and go back to that one the point is you can potentially get through and get several other answers correct that than just sitting there and dwelling and wasting time on something that you a you might not know you might even never get that question right but one question wrong and then doing several correct is a much better grade than one question wrong I freaked out I stopped I couldn't you know get past it and then I got all these other ones wrong as well so if you see a question you don't know just skip it for now give your it's okay give your brain a break move on to the other questions finish through as far as you can and then go back if you have extra time and pick up those ones that you had a hard time with because those would maybe not reduce your grade as much as if like I said you messed up on the whole test because you were dwelling on one problem all right the last thing I really want to uh, kind of stress here is that like I mentioned at the very beginning tip number one is to study thoroughly practice taking tests the more work that you put in before your test the more successful and confident you will be during your test I cannot emphasize enough taking the time when you get an assignment to make proper study notes study off those notes learn that information use the flashcards quiz yourself the more prepared you are for a test the less anxiety you'll feel anxiety really can come in because you know in your head that you have not prepared enough for your test you don't know the material which is why you're anxious in the first place and so taking the test is just an impending doom pressing down on you and just bringing you down you do not want that to happen the more prepared you are if you have put in the time you have studied you have made notes made flashcards reviewed them had a friend review them you have done the work when you walk in there at the very least you're going to do well worst case scenario you're going to miss a few and you're going to say oh yeah i really didn't know that one and it's okay it's okay everybody you're never going to really be like 100 percent i mean if you are you know 
kudos to you, right? But almost no one gets 100% when they're doing tests and things like that. There's always going to be problems you forget. They also put challenge questions on there that you shouldn't, you may necessarily haven't been taught, but they're just trying to kind of test and see where you are, see if you can use some of those um, information you've gotten to kind of, you know, assess or uh, uh, make a, a educated guess at something you maybe haven't been taught. So there's always going to be questions like that on tests. But what you can do is walk out of there feeling confident that you studied, you did your best, the ones you got right, you really knew. The ones you got wrong, you didn't know it was a fair, it was a fair mark off, you know, and you can uh, add that to your notes so that you can practice it for next time or whatever. But just the confidence for test taking really comes from being prepared and practicing uh, in the first place. The last thing that I um, want to just kind of briefly throw out there is just your language to your own self. If you are walking into something saying that you're not going to be good enough, you know you're going to fail, this is going to be a horrible day, you're going to have consequences, it's going to be the worst day of your life. Life, um, you're probably not going to do very well. If you walk into a situation where you're like, I got this, I've studied, I can do this, I know it, um, you know, I'm a good test taker, I'm a good student, I'm smart, I did all this work, look at my notes, these things are awesome, I am amazing. If you can build yourself up verbally and mentally, you are going to do a lot better in any kind of situation, not just test taking, just in life in general, because you're going to have self confidence, you know you got it, right? You're awesome. So don't put yourself down, encourage yourself, lift yourself up, practice with friends, lift each other up, and just mentally get your mind in a positive place. So make sure you're not tearing yourself down. Build yourself up, encourage yourself, surround yourself with people, study together, encourage each other, and just get positive vibes going so that you'll actually have a positive outlook um, and you'll do better. All right, so those are my tips on helping to prepare yourself mentally and physically for test taking. Um, hopefully they helped you out. I know there's tons of other things that you can do out there. There's other techniques and methods and things like that. If you have had something that has really helped maybe reduce your test taking anxiety or improved your testing performance, please make sure to leave a comment below so others can learn from your experiences as well. I certainly didn't mention absolutely everything you could do. Those are just some of the tips that we've used in our homeschool that have helped us out. So I hope that this video has helped you. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to have another one on how to kind of organize your life uh, so you're not missing homework assignments, um, you know, forgetting to turn things in and things like that. And we'll do that next time. So I hope you enjoyed this video on how to take tests and how to reduce test anxiety. And I will see you next time.